Hello folks, it's me, uh, Victor First Mornington and Second Life. This is essentially going to be the new updated uh, how to use your Hands of Omega console. Um, Katrina, since the last video was up for the, the Who run, uh, Katrina closed down, that's the Doctor Who Expo. Um, the replacement sim Utopia closed down as well. Um, all the old names, Ezzy McAlpine, Nodster Tardis, they're hardly in Second Life anymore. But the Doctor Who community is still going. Now, what everyone is looking at right now is the region called Dark Beach. And with a bit of landscaping by yours truly, there's me. Hello. There we go. Yeah, basically the entire sim at the ground is the Seal of Rassilon. All the way up, about 2,000 metres, is Zenobia Station. It's now on its own sim. Um, the new Gallifrey region is still going. That's been totally rebuilt in mesh, and it is now the Citadel. But enough about the roleplay stuff. This is about Hands of Omega. Now, the original video was split into two parts. Part one dealt with resing the thing out and getting it going. I'm going to do this in one video because, you know, it's 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 easy, right? So let's say you've just bought yourself the John Pert Wii console, right? So the three dots console, essentially. Um, what we're going to do here is, there we go, the three dots package. So when you buy the John Pert Wii console room or any console room for that matter from Hands of Omega, you get this, and you simply go to a sandbox, don't do it on any region with open build, please go to a sandbox and unpack your stuff, right? So you, bas you basically get your uh, John Pertwee or whatever console room you've bought, uh, package, and as it says there on the floaty text, touch me to receive contents, you left click, you click accept, and in your inventory you will have a new folder called console room 3 doctors. The three docs object, which is like colon, that's the dot above the other dot, followed by three docs, that's the console. Um, whatever package you get, or whatever TARDIS you get from Hands of Omega, the object in that folder that's got the colon before the name, that is the console reser itself, right? So that's the box that you res out to bring your console out, right? Add-on reser box that contains essentially the exterior that goes with your particular console. In the case of the three docks, it is of course the third doctor exterior. Again, left click on it to unpack it, you'll end up with a second folder with a single item in it. That's the exterior, right? So that exterior goes into your Statenheim remote. And there it is there. It's called Statenheim Remote 80114. You essentially res your Statenheim Remote on the ground. There it is there. It's on the ground, right? You right-click on it. Choose Edit. Go to Content. And that second folder you got, the add-on reser box with the police box, or whatever exterior goes with your particular console, you drag, you don't drag the folder, you drag the item in the folder into the Hands of Omega HUD, and you'll see it listed in the content. You then pick up, where is it? There's the take thing. There it is. You then select take, and you'll end up with a second copy of the Statenheim remote. You then right click on that and choose where. And it should pop up right there at the top, uh, at the top left-hand corner of your screen. When you click on the Start and Time Remote, you will get all the menus. Um, essentially, read the TTC handbook, which is that note card right there. It comes in your package. It will tell you all about the different options that you get with the Start and Time Remote. Basically, it's a key to your TARDIS that you can use, right? So that's essentially unpacking. That's essentially unpacking. It's extremely easy to do. So we've basically seen how to unpack your console and get the HUD ready. How about actually using it? Well, first of all, what you need to do, again, 
if you look at your uh, your console room folder, you'll see an object in there with a colon before the name. That's the object you res out onto the ground. When you res that object out, this menu down here pops up. You can either res the console here, which is right where you are right now, or choose a number. So if I was to choose 500, this reser box here would shoot up 500 meters and essentially res the console out, right? But I'm not going to do it with this box because I've already got a console resed out. Now, this video goes up on November the 29th, 2014. What you lot are about to see, if you're watching this video right now, on the 29th or the 30th, is a sneak peek of a Hands of Omega console that hasn't actually been released yet. Yeah, that's right. This is the Smith 2. Gonna walk along the gantry here. Of course, in the Capaldi version, this gantry is full of furniture. Head down the stairs. And here we are, folks. This is the Smith 2. In fact, you know what? Before we go into how the flight system works, we're gonna take a look underneath as well. All the way down. There we go. There's the lower bit. All these little cubby holes open, of course. Head back upstairs. So I'm going to do a quick camera round of the panels and stuff. So you can all get a little sneak peek at this console. At least a week before the thing actually gets launched. All these little toggly buttons all do stuff. around here to the main screen again the little toggly buttons most of these buttons have a light that corresponds to them so when I flick these switches all the little lights go on more toggly switches here there is basically buttons all over this bloody thing I mean really there is buttons everywhere Look at that. You also, of course, have the side panels over here as well. More buttons. <laughs> this, 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 this thing is essentially a button lover's dream. There's the side panel there, and of course there's the other side panel all the way over here as well. So this is it, folks. This is... Um, essentially a sneak peek at the All Mesh Smith 2 console from Hands of Omega. There we go. There's the top end with the spinny rotary things, the spinning spotlights at the top, the blinking spotlights at the top of the pillar, and of course this tracer light along the circumference of the upper room. And all of these, as you can guess by looking at the floor, they're casting shadows because right now I have advanced lighting switched on, which means all light sources cast a shadow. And because there's so many moving light sources up there, there is so many shadows. However, if the shadows do make you dizzy, there's a button here, and I'm trying to remember which one it is. I think it's this one. Yeah, it is. There's a button there that actually switches off the light projections if you don't like the shadows being constantly spinning around about you but to be honest I like them switched on there we go lights on so here we go this is the Smith 2 gonna go around the console again so all you people out there can pause the video and drool over the console before it gets released now how do these things work the one good thing in fact there's many good things but the one major good thing about the hands of Omega console systems is no matter what console you buy, if you buy the old 1960s William Hartnell console, 
you buy the David Tennant console. Although why you would want to buy that ugly pile of crap, I don't know. I don't like the Tennant console. I don't even like Tennant coming to think of it. But if you want to buy the Tennant console with all its coral and garden junk all over it, that's entirely up to you. Knock yourself out. Uh, me, personally, get the Hartnell. That's just me. I'm a big William Hartnell fan. But no matter what console you buy, whether it's the Hartnell, whether it's the Pertwee, whether it's this one, the Smith 2 when it comes out, whether it's one of the fan-made ones, there's like 40-odd consoles right now. Um, I think it's just over 40-odd consoles right now on the hands of Omega category. No matter what console you buy, there are similarities in the way the console operates. All consoles have a scanner screen button, which essentially switches on these scanner screens. And yes, the scanner screens on this console actually move as well. There we go. There is a button that takes care of power, and we're going to look at the power button right now, because this is it here. Power off. Basically shuts the console down. No power, nothing. No lights, right? Hit the power button again. Power on. And your power's back on. There we go. Owner on. Now, owner on's a very interesting one, and some people actually do use it. When you log out of Second Life, the console has been scripted, essentially, to lock on to your avatar, right? Pardon me. So if you're not online, this console, or sorry, your console, will basically shut down. There'll be no power. It'll be like switching the console off if you're not logged in. That way no one else can use it, right? Hit the power button again. You've got group lock. Group lock locks the console so only members of the group that you're in on the land that you're on can use the console, right? Unlock essentially unlocks the entire console so anyone can use it. And lock locks the console totally so only you can use it. And that's the power button sorted out. The other thing that all these consoles have in common is the role play system. On this console, the role play lever is there. So I've switched role play mode on. With role play mode on, you've got this breaks on and breaks off. That Matt Smith episode where River Songlet says you leave the brakes on, that's what that's all about. With brakes off, you don't get the typical landing noise. With brakes on, you get the typical landing noise. And with role play mode switched on, your console uses Artron energy. It uses power. Each time you land, or is it each time you take off? I think it's each time you take off, you use one bit of power in your reserve, right? This is with roleplay mode switched on. When you get to five bits of power left, your console will start to glow red, a cloister bell will sound, and you'll get a little warning message saying you better recharge your console now. In the category system, which we're going to look at, very soon actually, in the category system under the role play category there is presently three different places you can go to land your console and essentially recharge it so you don't run out of power. If you do run out of power with role play mode switched on you're essentially dead in space. You're dead. Your console will be sitting there like a big virtual paperweight not being able to do anything. So there we go, taking a look at the roleplay system. The next big thing that all these consoles have in common is, of course, the flight system. And on the Smith 2, it's that lever there. Manual is for a manual land. That one's self-explanatory. Fast land on. If you switch fast land on and you land on someone's razor, it will be an immediate land with the default exterior. There'll be no timer. There'll be no pop-up message asking what exterior to choose. It will just be an immediate land, hence fast land. Home will essentially land your console at the reser, the public reser, that you've designated as your home reser. Mine, if you've just bought a console and you click on mine, you'll get a database error because you won't have anything resed out. This is all the public um, 
this is all the public destinations I've got resed out under the Victor First account. So that's all my destinations, hence the listing mine. Search allows you to search for a reser that you can't remember what sim it's on, so you type in the sim name. If you can't remember the name of the reser, you type in the sim name again. Then we've got the important one, categories. This is where all of the public database entries are stored. You've got three choices, role play, shops or social. Self-explanatory, what we're going to do is land on a role play destination. So we choose role play. We will land, where are we going to land? Hmm. We will land... We'll land in Port Babbage, that's what we'll do. So I've chosen Port Babbage. The first menu that pops up sets the time you want to take for the flight. So I'm just going to hit set, which is zero minutes for an immediate land. The next menu that pops up is choosing which exterior to land in. We're going to choose PB Dock 1, William Hartnell's police box. And now we wait. And that's us. We've essentially landed. So, we walk round here and we look for the lever that opens the door, which is that one. And all we essentially do is walk into the thing. Yep. You've seen that right, folks. It's now using the new Linden Lab scripty thing, which immediately teleports people without having to go to the map. And here we are, folks. This is us in Port Babbage. There's the exterior that we chose to land in Port Babbage. It's the William... Oh, wow, I'm lagged out here. Something horrible. That's because I've got advanced shadows on in New Babbage. Yay! Yeah, bad idea. But yeah, there it is. The uh, PB Dock 1. And the texture hasn't even loaded yet. Hold on. Texture refresh. There we go. PB Dock 1. We're looking into the exterior... There's a picture of the console, but if I come in, hear that? You're actually hearing the specific power sound that your console makes if the exterior doors are open. If we close them, the sound goes away, and it's just your atypical police box sitting in the middle of nowhere. Pop the doors open, and the sound's back. So we're going to head back into the console again. Like so. Walk back down the stairs. And if I was to hit the takeoff button like this, the doors close. The DMAT sound goes, and if you were still standing over in Port Babbage, that, uh, if you were still standing in Port Babbage, that exterior would now be dematerializing. And essentially, folks, that is it. That is a very, very extremely basic rundown on how these consoles operate. No matter what console you actually buy, all of the controls, the major controls, the flight system, the power system, the sim scanner, the RP system, all of those controls are the same in all of the consoles. The only difference is the consoles essentially look different to each other. Um, so when you buy, for instance, you buy the Smith 2 when it gets released this year, and let's say a couple of weeks later, you get the William Hartnell console, right? The controls of the Hartnell look different because it's a totally different console room compared to the Smith 2, but the idea behind it is the same. There will be a flight button. There will be a power button. There will be a role play button. So once you get into the swing of things with the first console you buy, simply look for those same power, flight, scanner buttons and RP buttons on another console that you buy. And essentially, there we have it, folks. Um, that is a relook at 
how the Hands of Omega flight system actually works. Of course, this is it. Extremely oversimplified for absolutely brand new users to the Hands of Omega system. But for all you people that do know how it works, hey, guess what? You got a sneak peek of this console at least a couple of weeks before it got released. Yeah. Anyway, that's it from me. I'm Victor First Mornington, and that's the bunny thumper on my shoulder. Have a good one, folks.